Welcome to the archipelago of Formula One. Bahrain might have a small land footprint, but it's showing its big spirit right now in the grandstands. Either way, it's time for another fantastic weekend of Grand Prix racing. That's right, and we are here for season three. How about that already? So getting the new season underway, as you can see here, we made a bit of a change in the offseason. We bought out uh, the last remaining year of Alexander Albon's contract, and we replaced him with the uh, the free agent of Daniel Ricciardo. He had a lot of really good performances last season for McLaren. He was really the, the consistent driver that we were going to be looking for, so hopefully uh, he will uh, lead to uh, good things today alongside Pierre Gasly, who returns, obviously, for us. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to qualifying. I'll get through the... Uh, I'll do Q1 so you guys can see all the uh, the driver changes, because I think you'll see some very interesting faces in, uh, in new places. So with that being said... Look at this. So Max Verstappen on pole. Uh, but in terms of driver changes, Lewis Hamilton has swapped over to Alfa Romeo after two very competitive but ultimately very underwhelming seasons uh, for the Mercedes outfit. Uh, Valtteri Bottas goes over to Mercedes to his original home and replaces the outgoing uh, Englishman. Obviously, as previously stated, Daniel Ricciardo takes his talents to Aston Martin. And there are some, uh, some more hidden gems down here as well, if I'm not mistaken, such as Alexander Albon. Obviously, like I said, we bought out uh, what was left of his two-year deal, and uh, he decided to take his talents over to McLaren, looking to do uh, good things for the Woking outfit, but unfortunately, a, be a bit of a, an underperforming start, at least as practice three results uh, go so far. And Richard Bashour, in his F1 debut, uh, moves over to or moves up to Williams uh, for the outgoing Nicholas Latifi. So with that being said, there's your uh, your off season in a nutshell. So, gotta quickly do some setup work here. We appear to be very competitive. Our car is uh, very good, frankly. It's uh, this might not necessarily be the best track for it uh, on just on paper, but we should still be uh, pretty competitive. So that auto worked pretty well for Pierre Gasly. For Daniel Ricciardo, obviously, like I said last year, he had a bunch of uh, very good runs, very very surprisingly surprisingly good runs. Um, I'm sure looking to, uh, hopefully for our sakes and uh, for his own, he manages to uh, maintain form and uh, able, is able to deliver at the same level that he was uh, in years previous. So, with that being said, we've got a lot of good benchmarks uh, to uh, kind of aim for here. So we'll go ahead and do something like this for Daniel Ricciardo. So we'll go ahead and sim Q1. Uh, I'd imagine we should get through pretty easily. And as we, what... Huh. Okay, I take <laughs> I take it all back. Uh, with 93% confidence, no less. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Maybe uh, maybe caught some traffic on his lap or something, because that is that is quite strange. So we'll go ahead, and uh, I guess now we're gonna focus on Pierre Gasly's run. We'll go ahead and mount on our uh, our best set, or I should say our worst set. Of soft compound rubber and send him out, but I'm very surprised. That is a, uh, it's a little bit concerning, admittedly. Right so, uh, right check. Okay. we'll take this right and move on. Gonna quickly look at the uh, the new faces and new places. Green Hopefully, in. Hamilton decides to pop his head out a little bit sooner rather than later, but looks like not quite yet. As I believe that is Alexander Albon, and in, uh, in his new McLaren ride, uh, going to the racetrack now. Such an interesting thing to see, uh, the driver movement uh, in the offseason. Very interesting looking car there but obviously the main one that i want to see is lewis hamilton here and the number 44 goes to alfa romeo it's such a such a cool car uh to see it with the yellow numbers it actually looks kind of interesting i kind of dig it i can't lie but uh, in any case we'll uh we'll go ahead and focus here on pierre gasly so uh hopefully a clean banker lap that we can uh just kind of see where we are looks like alonzo is going to beat us that alpine has looked very very quick uh, throughout the entire uh, preseason testing period. So look for them to have a very strong season this year, barring catastrophe for them. So across the line, Pierre Gasly sets the initial the initial benchmark of a 30.5, but obviously Fernando Alonso displaces him and goes six hundredths faster than uh, what the French driver is capable of going. And Lewis Hamilton in his new Alfa Romeo goes to the top. Going to be very interesting to see what this team looks like uh, moving forward. And then obviously, like I said, Alex Albon in his McLaren ride currently sits P4 ahead of Lance Stroll and Sebastian Vettel. So coming into the pit lane now, uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can make the setup a little bit better. So we did move in the right direction. I think we'll take, uh, we'll keep taking baby steps 
uh, for now. As quick yellow flag comes out, not quite sure if that's four yellow flag sector one. That's an Alpha Tauri that has found themselves off track. That is Lance Stroll. Now let's have a look. It's Lance Stroll. Oh, and there's the lockup. Weird. That's the last thing they'll have wanted. It's a little bit of a mistake there from Lance. Not too crazy. But uh, in any case, he will uh, carry on just fine as Joe Guan Yu. Ah, now. so both Avatar is having issues. Look. There we have Joe. Mm. That lockup could have cost them dearly. Now, yeah, luckily for Joe, able to keep it out of the barriers and able to move forward uh, with his session as we complete our, our ally lap. Hopefully, Lando Norris doesn't get too close to us. I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to yield. Actually, no, it looks like we're going to be okay. So we'll at least have one complete lap uh, to go through here. Um. Uh, we should have enough time. Nah, we'll just call him in early. Not improving now the sector. We'll still get an accurate reading of uh, what the car is like. So we'll go ahead and just bring him in this lap and take him off of these tires. So, new set of softs going on, although I don't know if we really need them. Um, we made the car setup better, so like I said, we'll keep moving uh, in this direction. Obviously, on the, our initial setup adjustments, we did not move the right way, so hopefully that changes here. So, waiting for that clock to run down, everybody moves out of the pit lane. So, uh, we get out at the very back of the queue, uh, ahead of both Alfa Romeos and I believe uh, an Alpine of, who would that be? Would it be Ocon? Yes, it will be. So, very interesting to see. So, of those on the outside looking in for the top 10, you have Valtteri Bottas in his return to Mercedes in that 77 car. Alex Albon, uh, Lance Stroll will be the first driver to take time. Uh, Sebastian Vettel and obviously Zhou Guan Yu will be the last two, or, or uh, not the last two per se, but uh, towards the back of the queue. So... Lance Stroll, like I said, will be the first one to take time. Fernando Alonso is already over the, all over the back of that uh, Alpha Tower. So Alpine, very, very quick, uh, obviously, as previously stated. Obviously, they, they were very strong towards the end of last season, and I'm sure they've carried a lot of that momentum into this season. So Lance Stroll, first across the line. He's currently 13th uh, outside looking in. Can he jump himself into the top 10? He cannot. Stays P12 for the moment. I believe Alex Albon will be the next of the drivers that are down. Actually, Joe Guan Yu goes across the line next, jumps ahead of his Canadian teammate by 100th and moves himself up into P12, still on the outside looking in for himself, making sure Valtteri Bottas is not coming across the line next. So Alex Albon to cross the line, currently sits 14th. Teammate is, is inside the top 10. He still only goes P11, so just barely missing out on Q3. Valtteri Bottas now vaults himself in. Esteban Ocon now looking on the, or on the outside looking in. Behind Pierre Gasly, Ocon is 11th, goes P7. Can Sebastian Vettel pull off some heroics and jump himself into Q3? No, not quite. So Valtteri Bottas and his return to Mercedes. Uh, a little bit lackluster here, getting getting beat by his teammate and uh, ultimately finding himself on the outside uh, of... Uh, yeah, that's just wonderful. I froze the game again, so that is my apologies. Uh, on, on my part, I do apologize. So with that being said, obviously Daniel Ricciardo finding himself on the outside of Q3 as I get my stream set back up again. Unfortunately, with Pierre Gasly, we've lost all of our data. I'm going to go 6.5 uh, down. Hopefully, we can find a little bit of time. We're going to put him on a, uh, admittedly, a dead set of uh, soft compound tires. So, we'll go ahead. We'll go do Q3. Uh, once again, sorry to Radio the uh, to the viewers at the moment. That was uh, my fault. Radio I just kind of panicked and uh, did it all wrong. So, with that being said, shouldn't have any issues. Hopefully, hopefully I won't wind up doing this again. It always happens at Bahrain, too, which is kind of funny. So uh, with that being said, I guess everybody will have a, a blank slate and uh, a new shot to uh, to go ahead and try to get pole here. Obviously, this is just a banker lap, not quite, uh, not very serious. Just trying to get the benchmark down to see if we can improve uh, Pierre's confidence at all. So yeah, we'll go ahead and come into the pit lane here. Hopefully, um, not impeding too many people on the on the way in. Uh, 1.8 seconds off the pace right now, obviously, but. Uh, Clearly, on a, on a dead set of tires, we'll go ahead and mount on some newies, go back to our best confidence, and we'll see what we can do. So the early favorite for pole position right now is Max Verstappen and uh, his Red Bull at a 29.895. So could be an interesting qualifying session. Very, very tight between 8th uh, place George Russell and 4th place Carlos Sainz. Uh, only less than, uh, than 2 tenths separate that group. So we'll go ahead and try to send ourselves out towards the back uh, half of this queue. Looks like we'll actually come out last. Uh, behind the two Alpines and a Mercedes of uh, George Russell. So, first driver to take time will be uh, the Red Bull of Sergio Perez. I almost did it again. Followed by Lewis Hamilton, followed by Lando Norris. So definitely keep an eye on those drivers. So they'll go ahead and start their flying laps. We'll see who's got what 
Can anybody knock Max Verstappen off the top of the board? We will just have to wait and see. So Sergio Perez coming out of the final corner on his final flying lap. Currently sits P3. Will the Mexican driver be able to improve time? Survey says no. So Perez will stay P3. Hamilton currently P6 will stay P6. I wonder, is anybody improving? There are those with green sectors. So this qualifying session is definitely not over yet. Leno Norris to cross the line next. Half a second off. Currently P7 stays P7. Now comes the two Ferraris of Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. So Leclerc to cross the line. Does he have anything for Verstappen? No. Stays P2. Sainz currently P4. Will he have anything to improve with? No, not at the moment. So Verstappen across the line. Actually, Carlos Sainz did improve time, but not position. So now comes Fernando Alonso. Actually, George Russell to cross the line next. Currently sits P8. Stays P8. Fernando Alonso with a huge lap. Jumps up to P3. Pierre Gasly, last one across the line. Stays or jumps up to P9. Really close qualifying session here. Great lap there from Fernando Alonso. Puts himself at the front. I think you can see who the uh, the, the protagonist for the seasons uh, will be. It's going to be a three-way fight between Red Bull, Ferrari, and Alpine. However, we are still in touching distance. Uh, only at a 30.4. If we had just knocked off a little bit more time, it could have been P7. But uh, still a little confused as to what happened uh, with Daniel Ricciardo. But I guess we'll just have to focus on the race for the time being. So, new faces in new places. All about ready to start the uh, the first race of Season 3. I'm super excited. I don't know how he managed to do such a bad lap with 93% confidence. That's uh, it's a bit shocking and a bit concerning. But uh, it is what it is. So, our strategies that we have available to us are soft, medium, soft soft hard soft and soft hard medium obviously in terms of pure time these two strategies are very very close i do not trust the softs however i think with pierre since we made q3 we'll go ahead and i will just back this up a little bit i, I like i said i normally do not allow myself to change the uh, the strategies but to make it reflect uh what it actually will be we'll go ahead and at least move the hard stint uh back a little bit meanwhile with daniel ricardo he has two sets of brand new soft tires so i think we'll go ahead and uh, try to be a little bit risky here and see what we can do with the Australian driver. Obviously, starting from 17th, not an ideal situation. Hey, what's up, Sean? Alonso P3 on the grid. Yeah, Hamilton in the Alpha. Yeah, yeah, it was a really cool offseason. It was actually it was kind of boring. Interestingly enough, Latifi was actually originally signed, and I can I can probably show you guys in the off or uh, once we get done with this race. Latifi was actually signed to be the number one driver at Alfa Romeo, but he was removed after the word after Hamilton was able to be signed for very cheap. So maybe a little bit of gamesmanship there from Hamilton to find himself. Uh, outside of uh, Mercedes in a new environment. But in any case, it is actually very cool to see. So, with that being said, let's move ourselves on. Actually, we'll go ahead and do this really quick. We'll go ahead and set their ERS units uh, for now. We'll go ahead and put them both, or we'll put Pierre Gasly on defend, and we'll put uh, Daniel Ricciardo on overtake. With no further ado, let's get this race underway. Clear skies tonight, with the drivers having now arrived at their grip positions. There we have Pierre Gasly. A top 10 position today, but will they be able to capitalize on it? And behind them, it's Ricardo. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. Will their hard work pay off today? Here we go with the Bahrain Grand Prix. And it slides out. And away we go! Lights out and away we go indeed. For whatever reason, Esteban Ocon did not get off the line very well at all. So uh, we might actually be able to jump up a whole nother position. We'll go ahead and switch Pierre Gasly to overtake. Unfortunately, looks like the track is a little bit roadblocked for the time being as uh, the drivers sort themselves out. Most of the field, actually all of the field, uh, electing to go for a set of soft compound rubber to start. Unfortunately, losing a spot there to the uh, Mercedes driver of George Russell, but not in the uh, not in the worst part, or I should say spot, of, uh, of all time. So yeah, everybody's starting off on a set of soft compound rubber and we'll see how this race works itself out so currently sitting 17th and p10 uh actually pierre gasly gonna go ahead and move himself up into p9 we'll go ahead That's and it. put him on defend make sure he can hold this position for as long as possible as daniel ricardo trying to make up some positions here he will slot himself up into p16 in front of uh, the haas of kevin magnuson so we'll see how this all works itself out looks like valtteri botas uh playing a little bit of defense there um, on uh, the uh, McLaren of Alex Albon. Yes, that you're hearing that right, the McLaren of Alex Albon. Um, Daniel Ricciardo goes ahead and uses a little bit of that uh, ERS that he has saved up and will move himself away from Kevin Magnussen. But uh, I think we should be we should be pretty okay here. We'll go ahead and uh, deploy as we're under a little bit of attack from Lewis Hamilton. Uh, actually, we're going to go ahead and overtake Hamilton. How about that? So really nice move there from Pierre Gasly. That will move himself up into P8, 
Hopefully we can get yep. close enough to land a Norris when DRS gets activated to be able to do something with it. But for the time being, a really, really productive He's start overtaken. thus far as there's a yellow okay. flag in Sector 3. That is that is Sebastian Vettel off-tracking. Yes, as now. you can imagine, uh, Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel are teammates. Just saying, it's kind of interesting. So, uh, <laughs> in any case, we find ourselves uh, now up to P8 and P15. Daniel Ricciardo trying his very best to get ahead of uh, the Alpha Tower of Lance Stroll, but I think for the time being, we'll just job. go ahead and settle with this for now. So, finding ourselves in a very interesting spot. Nobody's really breaking away um, as of yet. Obviously, I would have liked to have had uh, a brand new set of soft compound tires as opposed to have uh, our, our Q3 uh, worn softs, but uh, still on equal footing with everybody else, and it uh, looks like our car is pretty competitive. We are definitely better than, uh, than where we're running right now. Our car should be... Uh, definitely more securely inside the top 10, but uh, I guess we'll have to see how this race plays itself out. So, like I said, everybody's kind of, all, all the teams are really, really close. Um, obviously, the big three of uh, Red Bull, Ferrari, and uh, Alpine uh, are currently dominating at the moment, but obviously you got guys like Lando Norris, uh, Pierre Gasly, and, uh, and an Aston Martin, and Lewis Hamilton and his Mercedes, and then, or, uh, Lewis Hamilton and his Alfa Romeo. Man, that's weird to say. And then the two Mercedes uh, quickly in tow, followed by Alex Albon. So you can see who's good and uh, who's, you know, a bit fraudulent, as you could say. But uh, already, uh, concerningly for Williams, uh, Richard Verschur is actually uh, fighting with Mick Schumacher and actually costing themselves time uh, already four and a half seconds back of the next closest car being Yuki Sonoda in 17th. So not looking great so far for the Williams group, but uh, obviously we'll see how this pans itself out. So unfortunately for us, Lando Norris kind of slipping off the back of this top six, kind of what I expected. Like I said, the, the top six team, or the top three teams uh, at the moment right now are just kind of head and shoulders above the rest as uh, Sergio Perez looks to make a move around the outside of Fernando Alonso, not quite close enough as uh, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc trade the lead back and forth. Really interesting opening laps here for the first race of the season. Everybody's still kind of close. Like, no, oh, that was really close to being an accident. Um, almost a moment there between uh, your two championship protagonists last season as uh, Leclerc will wisely back out of that and let Verstappen take the spot for the time being. But yeah, Verstappen really not able to get away at all uh, as we progress ourselves further into this race. And crucially, Lewis Hamilton, uh, whether he played some defense on George Russell or not, not quite sure, but he has lost uh, DRS to us. And we still have it on Lennon Norris, who still has it on Carlos Sainz. So maybe uh, an eight-car breakaway about to occur here. So that would help our race out all mightily as uh, we progress ourselves further through to this race. As you can see, everybody is still very, very close. This entire uh, top 17, really, I mean, everybody's still uh, basically within one second of one another bar. Uh, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell fighting now for P9. So definitely uh, going to be an interesting season if uh, everything stands as close. Then you have the Williams that are just way back in, uh, in Narnia. So, oh man, every time that I see how sharply uh, Leclerc and Verstappen cut their way um, through what I guess would be technically turn three, it's like, ooh, are they going to touch? Are they going to touch? And they never quite do it, but it is all mightily close. So uh, we'll see how this all works out. I think Hamilton actually in some clean air now should be able to make some progress as Mick Schumacher right, in the back this? has a bit of a lockup. That's a little well, embarrassing to say up. the least. They won't have been mm. happy about that. So yeah, a bit of a mistake there from Mick, but uh, obviously their races, as you can see here, being the only team uh, outside uh, of the initial DRS train, obviously bar Sebastian Vettel who had... Uh, that lockup. So Richard Verschur currently out, outpacing his uh, much more experienced German teammate. First off, Haas should be leading the game cheats. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe if you were in control, Banif, maybe. But uh, yeah, everybody's still pretty close. Everybody's still sticking around in that DRS train. Uh, definitely going to be interesting to see how this works out. Daniel Ricciardo, I think, is quicker than most of these guys in front. Just cannot seem to get uh, through the traffic as well as he would like. I think if Valtteri Bottas uh, were to find his way to the front of this group, I think they would be much better off. Obviously, with that little bit of better tire wear that he has at the moment. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that works itself out. So Lewis Hamilton fighting valiantly uh, to keep himself currently in P9, but I think in the end it might wind up hurting him uh, and his group more than it's going to wind up helping them. It's still pretty close. And yes, this, believe it or not, the game is set to, this is like the hard difficulty where, where the DRS is less powerful and the dirty air is very strong. I think you can see that just kind of everybody, everybody's just kind of stuck in a DRS train for the moment. It'll be interesting to see if Fernando Alonso was able to kind of break up these front two. I know, I know Sergio Perez was able to make a run at him once or twice in the early stages of this race, but uh, just not quite yet. I think there's some jostling there, but uh, we've actually got to go ahead and deploy here for a hot second to make sure we do not lose the DRS of uh, Lando Norris. Looks like we've been able to catch up pretty okay. effectively, and we'll go ahead and put Pierre back on neutral. So really what this race okay, uh, looks like it's going to come down to 
Okay. Is uh, what strategy or when you pit and will you get impeded in the pit lane or on an outlap? Because like I said, everybody has started this race on a set of soft compound rubber. Obviously, like I said, Valtteri Botas on those new soft tires should actually have quite a big advantage um, uh, from those around him. As you can see, already making up tons of time under the brakes and uh, for a moment setting the fastest lap of the race, but that now falls to Kevin Magnussen at the back of this train in 16th. So, I mean, there's not really much that we can do. Everybody's just kind of... This is what... I mean, this is kind of what you see in real life. Obviously, everybody would be a little bit more spread out, but you see these massive DRS transforming as uh, basically the entire top 16 are inside this group. Obviously, Yuki Tsunoda, uh, unfortunately for his sake, has fallen off of the back of this group. Uh, and then all the way back to Sebastian Vettel, uh, Richard Vashur, and Nick Schumacher in uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th, respectively. So, pit stops are not too far away. This is going to be a... I, I, this is going to be a really interesting race. This is like IndyCar or some shit. So, as we look further forward, as I said, Fernando Alonso finally deciding to make his move. He is now up into... Uh-oh. And you can see how backed up the field is. I'm wondering what that yellow flag was for. I think we've had a car run wide. Ooh, Sebastian Vettel running wide. Replay. So, not very important. A look again, it Bit of an oopsie Sebastian there. Didn't lose any time, really. Maybe lost about a second, second and a half. So, not the end of the world as Pierre Gasly has moved into the pit window. And I'm sure, like most of the leaders ha have as well. Um, but yeah, Fernando Alonso finding himself up into P2. That Alpine, or the, the Alpine team really, at the end of last season, started to get very, very strong. And I think uh, they've carried that momentum into 2023, or 2024, I should say, as uh, Fernando Alonso is primed and set to go to the race lead, probably on this next straightaway, I would imagine, as uh, we work our way further into this race. Unfortunately, Lando Norris uh, has lost the touch of the leaders. However, if Valtteri Bottas can get to the front of this train, I think we'll be in a good spot. If somebody's gone off, that's Leclerc. Oh no, so Charles Leclerc having Looks a lockup like or something. I clicked on the wrong position. thing, my apologies. So yeah, Pierre Gasly gets ahead of Lando Norris for the time being, but uh, Charles Leclerc having a mistake there, and with how difficult it's been for, for drivers to get through the traffic from the race lead, no less, that is unfortunate. And also having to wait for the entire field to go through, so... Damn it, Crofty, stop talking over up, me. But that could have been much worse. <laughs> it definitely could have been much worse, but not by not by much. Uh, so yeah, an unfortunate break there for Charles Leclerc. Still in it. I mean, if you look at it, he's still only 12 seconds behind the race leader. So he's not out of it yet. And with how much these drivers are stacking up, uh, you know, with the dirty air effect and whatnot, I don't think he's quite out of this race just yet. So we'll see what kind of pit strategies that we have unfold unfolding in front of us. Um... But yeah, it could be very interesting. So, there's once again, the DRS trains with everybody reacting to Leclerc going off. The the train has been reformed. Uh, the first driver outside of the train is obviously still Yuki Tsunoda uh, six, in 16th, 4.2 seconds back of Kevin Magnussen in 15th. And then Leclerc obviously trying to recover as well as Sebastian Vettel, who is basically just wind, winding up towing Richard Bashur and uh, Mick Schumacher in the back. So, like I said, it'll be interesting to see how the pit stops shake the, uh, the running order up as Verstappen, Alonso, and Perez now uh, take over the lead. We'll go ahead and bring Pierre Gasly in this time for a set of hard compound tires. Obviously the rule still stands. I need to do, I can't, I can't modify the strategies or else I'm going to have a huge advantage over the AI. So we'll go ahead and bring Pierre in. Uh, this lap might actually be okay. So we'll come in right above the 30% threshold and crucially we've actually uh, cost Lando Norris DRS. However, Valtteri Bottas, the first driver on those yeah. newer quote unquote soft tires. Uh, we'll have an advantage here. So I believe we will be the first drivers yeah, to come into the pit lane, and we will. So, Copy. Pierre Gasly obviously making a bit of an aggressive pit strategy pit call, pit and as you can see there, your race leaders reacting accordingly as most of them will be in within the next lap or so. My goodness. So, uh, yeah, a bit of an interesting strategy call that we've called here to get a one-lap undercut. It'll be interesting to see where we come out in comparison to Sebastian Vettel, Richard Bashur, and Mick Schumacher. I think we should have some pretty decent clearance to them, so hopefully not getting impeded. On our outlap, not the greatest pit stop at 2.9 seconds, almost a three second pit stop. So that's going to hurt uh, a little bit, but we should still theoretically be okay. So, the question is if you're Red Bull, what do you do? Do you wh Who do you bring in first? Do you bring in Perez and hope that you don't get caught up, or do you bring in Verstappen and maybe get stuck in the queue? It's going to be very interesting to see. So, who is going to come down where? So, a lot of pit crews being set up in the pit lane. Looks like Sergio Perez will, in fact, come in first. Followed by uh, Carlos Sainz, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell, Lance Stroll, and uh, others, I'm sure, following them in in close pursuit. So, I'm going to quickly check in here. We'll go ahead and put Daniel Ricciardo on attack. We'll switch back to Sergio Perez. But as you can see here, getting held up in the pit lane, not ideal as everybody kind of storms in. That's the problem with everybody running so close, is that they, uh, when you come in and pit like that, 
you risk coming out in the shits as Lewis Hamilton receives service. He will unfortunately also have to wait. He will actually come out last come of the drivers okay, here. So that is, that is very unfortunate here. So uh, look at that. Pierre Gasly, as you can see with that one lap undercut, obviously it's going to cost us 3% tire wear. Um, but he has come out in what will effectively be the, the, the net lead, I believe, as uh, Alonso and Verstappen will have to come in uh, this lap. I think we'll go... Um, yeah, take it easy. I mean, we still have a bit of uh, tire work to spend. I think we'll, we'll stick to our guns here with Daniel Ricciardo and burn some of this excess fuel, but uh, still in a pretty good spot. So uh, it'll you be very... I got to stop saying it'll be very interesting because obviously okay. it's going to be interesting. Understood. We have 15 guys uh, all still within DRS of the race leader. So Max Verstappen will go ahead and slingshot back past Fernando Alonso, not too uh, much of a fight uh, being provided there. Unfortunately for, uh, for Daniel Ricciardo, not quite able to get through the, the queue. I think maybe we'll just actually... I think we'll just go, uh, no, because we're going medium soft, so we need to get the most out of the stint. So, uh, unfortunate there, but we'll see who of the leaders comes in this time. So, Verstappen electing to stay out as Fernando Alonso, Valtteri Bottas, and Kevin Magnussen all electing to come in this time. So, interesting strategy calls. God, I gotta stop saying that word, but it is kind of interesting. You know, the AI is doing something a little different. So, Bottas not held up at all. I believe Magnussen might hold up Fernando Alonso, and he has. So, unfortunately there for Fernando Alonso, who likes to come out on the medium compound tire, uh, getting held up there a little bit by his Danish counterpart. So I believe with that all being said, it'll be very, very close. There are your leaders right there. Unfortunately, Pierre Gasly, <gasps> almost catastrophe there. Maybe not uh, not seeing kind of, fo oh, wow. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but uh, a little bit of a, so Fernando Alonso getting caught up on the curb, wow. That was a weird moment there. So I've uh, I've never seen that before. But that's going to hurt that entire group of drivers, as you can as you can see. Uh, George Russell has lost an immense amount of time to those behind, as well as Valtteri Bottas. I'm going to quickly do a mic check here, just in case. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay, cool. So yeah, the running order definitely is going to get shaken up here. Uh, lucky to not have uh, brought in uh, Daniel Ricciardo uh, that last lap, or else we would have been right in the shits of that. So uh, Max Verstappen, your race leader, I guess technically uh, into the pit lane. We'll go ahead and uh, push in with Daniel Ricciardo right here. He will come in for a set of medium compound tires. But yeah, Baxter Stappen into the pit lane, not getting held up here, so it'll be interesting to see. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> we'll see where he comes out in relation to everybody else as Charles Leclerc also coming into the pit lane here. So watching race leader Max Verstappen, where will he emerge into this group? Obviously, three drivers still having yet to make their pit stops and crucially, Mick Schumacher being sent long as uh, Sergio Perez forces the issue on him. We'll go ahead and try to overtake here with Pierre Gasly as well. Cool. And so like I said, Daniel Ricciardo okay, will be in this lap. So ER, ERS being fully deployed here. Like I said, do not want to get stuck behind the uh, the Williams and Mick Schumacher. But unfortunately, Pierre Gasly not quite close enough to make the move stick. And uh, he'll have to wait for the back straightaway. But unfortunately, Perez hole. has already lost okay. so much. Or we've already lost so much time to Perez that, uh, yeah, not, uh, not an ideal yeah, scenario no, to say the least. So Perez has now finds himself in the net lead of this race, unless uh, Esteban Ocon has something incredible at the pit stop. So Ocon in the pit lane, followed Aston by Daniel Martin Ricciardo, followed by Alex Albon. I believe uh, he will be receiving first of this queue, followed by Albon and Ricciardo. So Ocon in the pit lane, medium tires going on for him. Unfortunately, held up a little bit there. Uh, at least it uh, looks like, like a long hold. Unfortunately, also getting held up here with, Al with Daniel Ricciardo. He will come out in... For the moment, looks like he'll come out in P11. Obviously, has a, uh, a whole DRS straight to defend from. We'll go ahead and quickly put him on defend. Uh, looks like he'll be okay. We'll put him on neutral and pushing until the straightaway. And then we'll see where everything shakes itself out. So, we'll go actually go ahead and attack a little bit here. Make sure we find ourselves inside DRS range, which we have. We'll go ahead and switch him back to neutral. And away we go. So, this is the current running order. Everybody's tires. Um, yeah, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused as to how this is all going to shake itself out. But I think we, we definitely have a very interesting race uh, unfolding in front of us. Everybody's still in the D in the main DRS train bar, Sergio Perez, who uh, obviously will, I think, eventually be caught by Max Verstappen on his medium compound of tires. Um, Valtteri Bottas is already on the edge of DRS uh, to Carlos Sainz. As you can see here, guys like Joe Guan Yu obviously benefiting greatly from uh, the Fernando Alonso's troubles. An unfortunate uh, event there. And obviously, Lewis Hamilton, as you can see here, was running uh, P9 before the pit stops, but obviously getting held there and having to wait for the entire queue of drivers, almost running Fernando Alonso off the track. Um, definitely a, a rough pit cycle for uh, for the British driver in his uh, in his new Alfa Romeo. 
And then uh, Charles Leclerc trying to recover on those medium tires. Uh, not out of the race yet. I mean, he was 12 seconds. He was 12.5 back um, when he made that mistake, and currently 10.5 in arrears now. So definitely not out of this race per se, but uh, still a long way to go uh, in this one. So as we move ourselves forward, actually, we'll go ahead and leave ourselves on neutral. Um, Valtteri Bottas has, in fact, lost touch uh, with DRS of the, or the DS range of Carlos Sainz. Uh, this whole group is going to get towed away by those on mediums. But I think it's still early. We could still make mistakes and whatnot. But I think we're in, we're in a pretty good shot here to uh, to fight for a race victory, but I, which I think would be really, really cool. So we'll see how this all shakes itself out. But currently, the two Red Bulls lead from ourselves, from the Mercedes of George Russell, from the uh, McLaren of Lando Norris, Ocon, Sainz, and then uh, Joe overtaking Valtteri Bottas just then. So I think somebody on mediums like a, like a Joe Guan Yu really needs to lead this group up to the, uh, the primary train. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like Joe has that kind of pace at his uh, disposal. And unfortunately, everybody from 8th on back might just be screwed. And uh, we'll have to settle for fighting for exactly that uh, P8. So, yeah, but like I said, I mean, a safety car is always possible. You never know how these things will work out. But for the time being, your top seven have separated themselves from everybody else. So, the race leader Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen kind of dueling back and forth. We're just kind of biding our time in P3. Very interesting to see how only one lap of undercut basically took ourselves from P8 uh, to P3. And it frankly could have been more if we hadn't gotten held up uh, by the uh, the slower car of Richard Vashur. So, yeah, I mean, there's really, I mean, and for Daniel's race, there's really not much we can do. With the dirty air effect, you really can't get close enough in the corners. And obviously on the straights, it's great. But when, uh, when these two are kind of just swapping back and forth, there's really no other opportunities uh, to make anything happen for the time being. Obviously, we're playing the long game. Uh, going to go softs at the end. But like I said, it's an aggressive strategy, but obviously it's the, the one that we've decided to stick with. Um, I kind of, I might have to start pushing Pierre because your leaders are getting away. Uh, leaders being obviously uh, Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. We crucially did not have DRS there. And George Russell will look to uh, to go ahead and take this spot off of our hands. Okay on fuel, um, so you can do Lando Norris, speed. I think, would be the ideal leader or Esteban Ocon critically with 80% tire wear. Um, yeah, for the moment, I do, we're not... We're not quite as good as the Looks Red Bulls like here. Um, and I think we might position. actually wind up costing ourselves. However, we have managed to regain DRS. So uh, maybe not maybe not the worst in the world uh, per se. But obviously the, the pace of the car is all super, super close. Uh, it will definitely make for a very interesting season as, uh, as it unfolds. Make qualifying especially difficult. We'll go ahead. I, we're not even halfway yet. My goodness. I've wasted enough time. We'll go ahead and jump forward a little bit. There's really not much we can do. Kind of just waiting to see how... Uh, the pit stops cycle themselves out. So, yellow flag sector three. Ricardo yellow has moved hit. up to P10, so somebody okay, has gone stop. off. Here's the Ooh, replay. Lance Stroll has gone for a now spin. Look at this. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. Ooh. They lose it there. That's the spin. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate there for Lance Stroll, but uh, just the way that the uh, the cookie crumbles, I suppose. As uh, he will tumble down the order as Carlos Sainz has run wide. Has it affected his race look. at all, though? Is the focus here. Mm, not They're really. Wide, and there we can see them. So still managing to hang on to the DRS of those. Actually, for the moment, on the outside. So over one second back, however, he should get it back here. And now the uh, the train is once again made of seven parts. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what to do. So obviously, it's nice that Daniels moved himself up to P10. But that 17th uh, place qualifying effort definitely is not going to cut it. However, it looks like he's going to try to go around the outside of Valtteri Bottas and might just try to get Joe Guan Yu while he's at it. Um, not the best tires of this group, but still tires that are in very good uh, condition. We'll see if he's able to do it around the outside. Looks like he has not been able to pull that man that particular maneuver off as uh, the Red Bulls try to split away once again. I think they've actually managed to do it as we get dropped down to P4 for the time being behind the Mercedes of George Aston Russell. So there. obviously Red Bull have been the sitting there kind of waiting to, the, to you know, set phasers to kill and it looks like they've actually managed to do it and they have broken away at least for the moment with Verstappen trying to tow away Sergio that. Perez on a, on a set of hard compound tires. Obviously still still fighting pretty hard so uh, definitely not uh, over just yet as uh, Daniel Ricciardo has now finally moved himself in front of the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas and now goes to the lead of, uh, of this train at least momentarily before getting this first once again down to P10. So yeah, I'm kind of, kind of, uh, God, I need to stop saying kind of interesting for everything. Like, I, it's just interesting. Um, we'll go ahead and skip forward here, uh, closer to the pit stops, barring uh, an accident or whatnot. Little yellow flags popping up here and there. I don't think it's for anything uh, too crazy. So Leclerc has had a lockup, trying to recover back into the top ten. Yeah. And this, yes, 
there. That's the lockup. Yeah, unfortunately, pushing a little bit too hard uh, there for Mr. Leclerc as uh, now Orlando Norris and Carlos Sainz, the ex McLaren teammates, decide to battle for P6. So, as it currently stands, so you've got the top seven here, and then you drop back and have uh, eight through 12. Drop back a little farther to them. It's Leclerc, Hamilton, uh, and Magnussen running 13th through 15th. Stroll all by his lonesome after spinning in 16th. Sonoda 17th. Vettel trying to recover from, uh, really has not been able to recover from that first lap mistake. Currently towing Richard for sure. And then Mick Schumacher after locking up has gone all the way back. So, hmm. Those Red Bulls, are, they're, they're far out. But it really depends what tires they like to go onto for the finals. And I believe most people have a set of medium or soft compound rubber waiting for them. So, uh, hmm. Definitely not over yet. Don't want to, don't want to, don't want to count ourselves out just yet. As Esteban Ocon has moved himself into the DRS range of Max Verstappen, who's had a lockup. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look at the replay. We're just watching the Red Bull. So Verstappen had just retaken the lead from his teammate, Sergio Perez. And, uh, yeah, not, not ideal for Max Verstappen to say the least. However, this might wind up hurting both Red Bulls as, uh, now Ocon in DRS range. Uh, Fernando Alonso will be the first driver to come into the pit lane, so... Uh, Alpine obviously liking to be a bit ag aggressive as the Mercedes pit crew also sets up and I believe that is the uh, the Haas pit crew setting up at the end of the pit lane as there's a yellow flag in sector 2, not quite sure what that's for but it doesn't appear to have affected our race too bad as somebody's had a lockup but uh, Fernando Alonso liking to go onto a set of soft compound tires so Richard for sure uh, sitting behind now, Sebastian Vettel doing a pretty nice job but uh, unfortunately right there making a bit of, of a mistake uh, and uh, costing himself. Crucially, Fernando Alonso needs to maintain uh, track position in front of Yuki Tsunoda. It looks like he's been able to do that, and uh, he will have a hell of an outlap to, uh, to be able to make up some uh, some time. We'll obviously be pitting. We'll stick to our guns. We'll pit Pierre Gasly at the end of this next lap. Crucially, Sergio, I mean, I believe everybody will, pitting at, will, will be pitting at more or less the exact same time. Um, yeah, it could be very interesting. So we'll go ahead and set Pierre Gasly to attack. Do your leaders pit? So Sergio Perez electing to stay out. The Mercedes crew was set up, I believe, to receive George Russell. I was wrong. So uh, obviously the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas will be in this next lap. We'll go ahead and fit on a set of medium tires for Pierre Gasly, who, like I said, we've uh, instructed to push into the pit lane as Valtteri Bottas now comes in. It'll be interesting to see where Fernando Alonso and he come out in comparison to one another. But crucially, unfortunately, Kevin Magnussen also decides to come into the pit lane and uh, having to, or uh, the Mercedes team having to hold uh, Valtteri Bottas for an exorbitant amount of time as uh, Kevin Magnussen comes in for service, crucially for him, electing to go into a set of medium compound tires. And Alonso, as you can see there, has made up quite a bit of time on your race leaders, so uh, definitely something to look out for whilst this, uh, this cycle completes itself. I did not check to see if there were any other people coming into the pit lane, but I'm sure we'll see it all in due time. So... Sergio Perez currently yeah. leading this race. Only uh, only two pit crews set up, so we are bringing in Pierre Gasly in uh, this lap. Hopefully coming out in some clean air. Nice and aggressive into the pit box, and there you go. So Red Bull electing to pull the trigger here. They are going to bring in Sergio Perez or Max Verstappen this next lap, as well as McLaren setting up. And I believe the other Haas of Yuki Tsunoda will be in this next lap. So... Two point, another 2.9 second stop for our guys. It's not, just not quite good enough for uh, for our standards, but uh, not really much that we can do. So, um, Daniel Ricciardo is about a lap away from being able to push. We are going to come out in clean air. This could be huge uh, for our race. Well, it's just a matter of uh, now waiting and seeing how this all cycles out as Yuki Tsunoda uh, makes his way onto the pit lane for what will be his uh, final stop of this GP. So, now playing the waiting game, will Sergio Perez like to come in the pit lane? That gap has come down from 3.4 to two and a half seconds, or I should say two seconds flat. Verstappen will be called in first. Very interesting to see that uh, Red Bull did not give Sergio Perez, current race leader, uh, any sort of priority as Lando Norris will follow Max Verstappen into the pit lane. So Verstappen into the box. Soft tires going on crucially for him. So electing to stay out that little bit longer uh, to get some as uh, Lando Norris also taking on a set of softs. I believe most people uh, at this point will take on a set of softs. We'll quickly call Daniel Ricciardo into the pit lane uh, this lap will go ahead and let him push in. But Max Verstappen coming out, wh where will he be in relation to Pierre Gasly? There's Verstappen, there's Gasly. So they will be within DRS range of one another. But crucially, I do not believe Norris will be close enough to get DRS off of these top two. So 
Very, very, uh, God, once again, I'm just, I keep saying very interesting, but it is, it is very interesting. Um, to see how this race has played itself out. So, currently, uh, Gasly leads from Verstappen from Norris, at least in the net. Okay. From Stroll, Alonso, Botas. Um, a very interesting hodgepodge of, uh, strategies being played here as uh, we try to keep Daniel Ricciardo in front of uh, Alex Albon for the time being. So, once again, when will Red Bull call Sergio Perez? And I, I'd imagine they have to do it this lap. They really don't have a choice. Um, as we go ahead and uh, actually Daniel Ricciardo is pitting this lap, so no we can just go ahead and put him on standard. So Sergio Perez okay. stays out another lap, so a very interesting strategy call. Maybe seeing if they can catch a safety yeah, car, but uh, this is going to hurt him big time with that okay. undercut. So Esteban Ocon and his Alpine in the pit lane. Red Bull setting up, so they will Alpine. receive Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz at the end of next lap. Set of soft tires going on for Esteban Ocon. No other drivers behind in proximity to hold him up. Good pit stop there from the Alpine crew. We'll see where they emerge in relation to everybody else as Alex Albon comes in for a set of softs. And obviously the same for Daniel Ricciardo. Hopefully not having to wait, unfortunately, uh, having to wait for the McLaren driver to clear himself as uh, we continue on into this race. So, yeah, this is, uh, is kind of funky. So they've left Sergio Perez. So I'd imagine all three of these drivers will be coming in uh, this lap. They'd be foolish not to. Um, surely they will bring in, and there we go. So Sergio Perez, Carlos Sainz. Uh, coming in crucially, or interesting I should say, George Russell being left out for yet another lap as the Mercedes crew gets set up, so he'll be in next lap, so hard tires coming off, soft tires going on, crucially did not get held up there by the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz, both drivers receiving service down and away, Lewis Hamilton and his Alfa Romeo coming into the pit lane now to receive service for his final stop of this race, so Sergio Perez is here, as you can already see in here, this is the amount of time that he lost from doing that overcut. We'll have very good tires for the end of this race, but definitely a lot of ground to make up on your race leader. So George Russell is currently uh, leading this race as we'll go ahead and see where everybody else merges out as Fernando Alonso. I'm not... Uh, oh, right. Fernando Alonso should be in the fight for the lead, but unfortunately, uh, obviously having lost that huge amount of time from his incident at turn one, okay, uh, finds himself uh, quite a ways a adrift from your leading uh, quintet. Quintet? Quartet? Not quite sure. Um, in any case, we'll go ahead and skip forward here to George Russell's pit stop, and then it's just a matter of playing the tactics. So, yeah, Russell will be in the final driver to pit in this race, going obviously onto a set of soft compound rubber. Has worked out quite well for him. He will actually come out in front of the, uh, the Alpino Fernando Alonso, who is already down to 66, or 60%, I should say, uh, tire wear. That's going to be quite the stretch uh, for the Alpine driver to make it uh, on tires, but uh, just having to wait and see how that all works itself out. So, as the pit cycle has been completed, We'll quickly look through the field and see what everybody's doing. So Verstappen leads on soft from Gasly on mediums from Norris on soft from Esteban Ocon, who crucially has the best tire wear of the leading four. Sergio Perez, not too far adrift, only 3% off, as well as Carlos Sainz, not too far behind him. However, they are 2.4 and 2 seconds back of each other, respectively. Then back to George Russell on the best tires uh, of anybody in the field, at least in terms of the soft compound rudders. Uh, towards the front, uh, currently sets P7, Fernando Alonso in his DRS. And P8, as somebody has run wide. That's for Stappenoff. That sounds like someone's gone wide. There. I guess not. We can take a look now. Got Let's my blues mixed up, look. I suppose. There we have Joe. Ooh. They go wide, right off the racing line. Yeah, unfortunately, they're holding up that whole group, which uh, also does contain the uh, the Aston Martin, or I should say ourselves, uh, with Daniel Ricciardo. So a bit unfortunate there for him, but that is one points paying position. That's going to be quite difficult to get to. So as you can see here, pick out your favorite driver. Um, I believe actually Mick Schumacher is still the only driver that has yet to pit um, in this race. So right now, four different drivers, four different teams, uh, two different compounds. It will be very interesting to see how this race works itself out. I think if we if we can manage to get ourselves into the lead for at least a straightaway, we'll go ahead and uh, get ourselves back to neutral. Actually, it's already worked itself out that way. So Pierre Gasly looking to go around the outside of Max Verstappen. Remember, these guys were teammates. Uh, really not that long ago, so uh, maybe some uh, some beef between the two could be very... Uh, I was going to say it. I was just going to... I swear, every time I say interesting, I got to, like, penalize myself somehow. But like I said, it is. It is very interesting. So I don't know. So George... Ooh, George Russell's had a lockup. Now let's look at this. Here's George so Russell. obviously in hot pursuit, trying They've to get himself it. free of uh, Fernando Alonso, and unfortunately making a bit of a, of a mistake there. Uh, the Englishman now drops down to P11 into this group of uh, Valtteri Bottas, Joe Guan Yu, and George, uh, or Kevin Magnussen, I should say. Um, yeah, like I said, it'll be interesting to see how this... God, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I think like a, like a shock collar or something. Oh, there's a prolonged yellow, so obviously 
Somebody's had a serious incident. That's Kevin Magnuson. Oh man. All eyes on Kevin Magnuson here. Mm. And yes, that's the lockup. Yeah, unfortunate there for Kevin Magnuson. It's kind of the uh, the tale of what 2023 was in 2026 or 2024, I should say, not uh, not getting off the way that I'm Aston sure Martin the Danish driver would like. There. So they've moved up a place. Really just kind of swapping back and forth with Verstappen here. It looks like Norris isn't quite quick enough to be able to really interject into this uh, into this battle. Um, kind of what we saw earlier where the top two drivers, uh, if, they, if they really do have the pace, they can kind of just they mitigate and uh, run their own race. Um, I'd like to see Daniel Ricciardo move himself a little bit farther forward. The problem is we really don't have any spare um, ERS to fight with. And crucially, Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz have found their way onto the back of this train. They are on... Uh, albeit like new, Aston but Martin still very, very much uh, competitive or on a competitive set of soft compound rubbers. So this race definitely is not over yet as uh, six drivers or yeah, six drivers on five different teams on uh, different sets of soft compound rubber uh, will be the ones fighting it out for this race. I still I don't uh, man, it's going to be a uh, painful Fernando Alonso or for Fernando Alonso to get to the end of this race on a set of softs. But uh, once again, we'll just have to kind of see what happens here. We'll go ahead and put S or Daniel Ricciardo on overtake to see if, if he can jump ahead of Alex Albon, but uh, unfortunately not the greatest exit there from him, and uh, just not quite close enough. Maybe if uh, some of these guys' Same tires field, start to go off the field. cliff, we can uh, pick up some spots, but uh, not looking too great for the moment as we really don't have much to fight with. Yellow flags. Waiting, waiting, waiting. What is it gonna, what's going to be? I think that's a Haas going slowly. Is that a lock up? It is. It let's was Sonoda. Okay. Now let's look at this. The focus on Sonoda. Mm. Just a bit too heavy on the brakes, and they've locked up. Yeah, unfortunate there for Yuki. Just not, uh, not the way that I'm sure he or or the uh, the Haas team as a whole would have liked their uh, their 2024 to uh, to start off. But uh, in any case, is te technically one less driver for us to deal with. So. I mean, I'd love to be able to sit here and save some battery and then try to blitz away from this group, but I think uh, I think we're just kind of going to get stuck running in limbo with uh, Max Verstappen. Crucially here, though, we do have DRS, and we do ha we have the uh, the fourth quickest car of uh, of the ten teams uh, in a straight line. So very very uh, stark or a, a, a staunch uh, difference between this year and last year is uh, Lando Norris is going to try to go on the outside of Max Verstappen. Unfortunately for him, not quite close enough for the time being. As uh, these, I mean, these softs just keep dying, and uh, these mediums are only going to get better. So uh, I'm kind of licking my chops right now. It could be very uh, cool. God, I was just going to say interesting again. Uh, Fernando Alonso is going to fall off a cliff here. Those softs are absolutely demolished, and uh, he currently finds himself P8 already below the 30% threshold, uh, with over five laps to go in this race. So uh, I would not be surprised if Fernando Alonso kind of just slips back uh, to this next group, as uh, he's probably going to lose. Uh, DRS to Leclerc in the uh, in the not too distant future. So, I mean, this is uh, we're fighting for a race win, like legitimately on merit. We are fighting for a race win. Um, obviously, some of those around us have, ha have made mistakes that uh, we have directly benefited from, but still, we're doing pretty okay. Um, yeah, I really just cannot find a way to break the stalemate between ourselves and Verstappen. Crucially, Lando Norris uh, not really appearing to be able to do much uh, of his own. Just really can't get close enough in the corners. And then on the straightaway, it's just not quite close enough to make anything Use happen. Overtake. I would really love to see Daniel Ricciardo work his way uh, forward here, especially with how much better uh, his tires are compared to everybody else around him. Obviously, bar uh, about three Botas on the mediums. But uh, I want to see. So where is Fernando Alonso and all this? So he's just barely. I mean, he's he's going to be in. I mean, he's at 20% right now. That that is puncture territory. So I would not be surprised to see Fernando Alonso uh, suffer a uh, an extremely late tire failure. Uh, before this race comes to a conclusion, but crucially a lot of those around us have gone over the 30% threshold So we could we could maybe if we time this out perfectly and blitz away at the perfect time find ourselves running away with this race okay. It's just gonna be a matter of where we wind up in the queue um, I think we'll go ahead. I mean I Mean Fernando Alonso's on 18% that is that is pretty bad. So I think with two to go We'll go ahead and tell uh, Ricardo just to give it hell yeah, and to see what happens. Yellow flag, Sector 2. Somebody has run wide or spun. Oh, spin. Sergio let's Perez, wow. Look. So, let's look at this. so your fourth this place runner, Sergio Perez, Perez on, trying to get on throttle. I should say fifth place runner. That spin is undoubtedly mm. going to cost them time. Yeah, unfortunate there for Sergio Perez. Still winds up in P6. Uh, we'll probably wind up finishing there as Leclerc is just way too far behind to, uh, to say anything or to have any say in, uh, in his race. So we'll go ahead 
and switch Daniel Ricardo to attack now. We'll see come to uh, where he winds up. But yep. crucially, we have almost broken DRS to Lando Norris. Um, and this, this lead trio, uh, or I should say this lead group really, two more laps, two more laps. have uh, split up quite a lot. So we'll go ahead and harvest here, obviously, Verstappen. I saw him do this a lot last year with Sergio Perez, where he would uh, just kind of wait uh, until that last lap to make any sort of maneuvers. To, uh, to do anything crazy. So Pierre Gasly going to play some pretty hard defense here. Looks like he's been able to hold off for Stappen, at least for the moment. Really just a matter of uh, building up some battery and uh, trying to get him uh, on the last lap as we come to, uh, to two laps to go. So, yeah, this will be, uh, I mean, five cars still in it. I mean, Sainz is still within DRS range. I don't think, obviously, Carlos Sainz has a shot to win this race. Um, but still, it's uh, not over yet. So, uh, I really wish Verstappen had managed to get ahead of us here. You can see he's waiting there just to see if he can get DRS charge. right at the end. So I think we'll, we'll we'll bet on Pierre Gasly to do something incredible here. So, so we just need to push with that now. being said, we come to the to last push. lap in the lead. Uh, obviously, for the moment, we're going to relinquish that lead to Max Verstappen. Crucially, so the idea is, is that we can re-overtake him on the back straight. We'll go ahead and give Pierre Gasly everything that he has. Looks like he's going to actually cross Max Verstappen back over. Maybe Verstappen not really uh, paying attention, but uh, going to have a big run here. Uh, if not on this straightaway, maybe the next. Unfortunately, Verstappen's had quite a good exit. DRS wide open. Maybe, just maybe able to make a move here. Not quite. Or he's going to go for it around the outside. A big move there from Pierre Gasly. Mr. Around the outside. If he can get himself clear right here, we might have a shot to win this race. Going to be very, very close to see. What happens here? Unfortunately, Daniel's burnt through uh, what's left of his soft comp compound tires Martin, and uh, actually will be a little bit close on they fuel. However, we have now moved ourselves in front of Max Verstappen. We're going to push here to the end. Really big exit there for Pierre Gasly. If we need to defend, really, this is the last overtaking spot. We might have just won ourselves the first race of the season. I think Verstappen may have prematurely used up all of his ERS. As you can see here, pulling away from Lando Norris quite a lot, but I think we have out uh, we have outfoxed cool. the lion. And I believe uh, Pierre Gasly will be on his way to his uh, his third career win and uh, his first win and the championship lead of this season. It looks like he's going to do it. Oh, my God. Pierre Gasly rounds the final corner. This is how you get 23. 2024, I should say, started off right. Pierre Gasly wins the Bahrain GP in front of Max Verstappen, in front of Lando Norris. Esteban Ocon comes fourth. Carlos Sainz comes fifth. Sergio Perez, who I'm sure is very disappointed. <laughs> Sergio Perez well done, comes well P6. Uh, Charles Leclerc P7. Fernando Alonso with 8% tire wear uh, hangs on and comes back to finish P8. I'm sure a lot of these guys are very disappointed with what could have been. George Russell comes back to finish P9. And crucially, Joe Guan Yu comes across the line and takes the final points paying position in, in P10. Daniel Ricciardo looked like maybe... I'll learn a bit from today. We'll come back stronger next weekend. Yeah, sure we Take will. So, up. unfortunately, that, that poor qualifying effort from Ricardo really uh, hampered his race and uh, really was never able to recover for it. from it. Comes home in P13. But, uh, yeah, let's fucking go, Pierre. That's how, that's how you get the New Year started off right. Well, this weekend, Pierre Gasly flew us to the stars. A spot on the podium is exactly what the team deserved, and they got it. The Frenchman was in sublime form today, fully deserving of his podium finish here. Yeah, how about that? Up eight spots from a ninth place starting position. I knew we were going to be competitive. It was really just a matter of uh, getting track position because you would just get, as you guys could see in the race, you would just get stuck in those DRS trains and there would be nothing you could do. So Pierre Gasly wins the first race of the season. An incredible result from the French driver as uh, he leads the, uh, the world championship for the first time in his career. Obviously, I'm sure Max Verstappen wishes he could have had that last lap back. Just kind of just kind of got out Fox. We, we played it very well. Uh, maybe Max thought we were uh, a little bit short on fuel or whatnot, but obviously having the uh, the battery at the end to come back and to be able to hold on to that position. So very, very, very good result from us. And also shout out to Lando Norris. Uh, up five spots, started right in front of us. He was right in the thick of the fight. Uh, definitely, I mean, this race could have gone either way. Uh, but so yeah, very happy 
to uh, to come out on top. Then you get guys like Fernando Alonso, who would have been. I mean, he came out when he made his first pit stop. He was right with us, but uh, unfortunately had that spin or uh, that weird moment at turn one where everybody got separated, and uh, he manages to only come home in the uh, in the eighth position. And then Joe Guanyu up four spots, scores uh, an F1 point. Very solid start to the season for him. And like I said, Daniel Ricciardo was quick. There were some times in this race where he was running up in the points, but uh, just unfortunately got stuck in the traffic at a bad time and uh, really wasn't able to recover from what was a, a pretty horrible uh, qualifying outing. And then Lewis Hamilton started P7 maybe. I mean, he was right behind us for the for the whole beginnings part of this race. Um, not, I don't quite remember what happened to him. I think he had to wait. Uh, he was a part of the first queue of drivers to come into the pit lane. So he had to wait for everybody to go through and then just never quite was able to recover. So... Obviously, driver standing same as the finishing results of this GP. Spot your favorite drivers. Uh, Richard Vashore, crucially and very interestingly, outracing Mick Schumacher. So a very interesting uh, situation there at the Williams Group. In terms of the constructors, Red Bull, unfortunately, with their two uh, with their two drivers, outscore us by one point. Uh, really, really close between the top five. Only only 11 points spread uh, between your top five, and then only two points for Mercedes and one point for Alpatari. And incredibly, Alfa Romeo having maybe one of the worst starts to a season that they that they could have imagined uh, not scoring with either driver. So some interesting storylines developing here. Uh, I really look forward to the season. It's incredible to start it off with the race win. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys uh, in Jeddah.